So over the last few years, my air fryer use has increased so dramatically in my kitchen that outside of a few uses of my standard household oven, this thing has pretty much been replaced on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know a lot of you agree because I talk to people with air fryers, and of course a lot of you watch these videos. But I wanted to take a deeper look and really explore the reasons why this has happened. So today I'm gonna to be breaking down the 10 biggest reasons why my air fryer has pretty much made my household oven obsolete. So the first reason that my air fryer has pretty much replaced my oven is the basket shaking ability. Ha ha ha. Now when you're dealing with a convection setting, whether it be your air fryer or your regular oven, your food is not gonna get a perfectly even cook. So rather than having to reach in the oven every time, releasing a ton of heat, risking your goddamn life, <laughs> my number one injury is definitely pulling something hot out of the oven. Look at these things. Ah, ah. Uh, ah. And to do that every time is much more of a process compared to just taking this handle, pulling it out, shaking up your food, and back into the oven. I'll show you two great examples of this. So I got a block of tofu right here that I'm just gonna dry off. I'll cut up into some cubes. I'm gonna coat it in some oil, give it a little sprinkle of salt, and just give it a little mix so everything is perfectly coated, and then into the air fryer at 380 for five minutes. All right, five minutes up, which is a great place to just give it a shake. Back in, barely interrupts the cooking. And I'll do five more minutes and we'll check it then. All right, let's check it again. Getting crispier. Shake, shake, shake. Back in, probably just three minute intervals at this point. Here we go, final reveal. Now try doing that in the oven, I dare you. Not fun reaching in the oven constantly to flip them. Perfect little crispy tofu cube. And these are great to just have around. You throw in a salad, you throw in a stir fry. Little protein, little texture, still goodness. Now one of the best examples of the shakeability of your air fryer are tortilla chips, which I pretty much at this point exclusively make in the air fryer. So I got a few corn tortillas here that I'm just gonna slice up. And what I'll do is I'll put them right into the basket and just give them a spray with some oil and then shake them around a little bit, give them another spray so that coating is a bit more even. And then into the air fryer at 380 and I'll start these for five minutes. After that initial five minutes, I'll pull out the basket, give it another shake, and here's where I'll start shortening those intervals. So about every two minutes, pull it out, give it a shake until those chips are evenly cooking and just repeat that process until your tortilla chips are perfectly crispy. All right, so you can see they're super crispy. We're gonna hit them with salt. Now that we've salted, we can still shake, which is awesome. You can see they've puffed up a bit. Most of that oil has been absorbed into the chip. Salsa from the garden. One more. I would say probably five times easier than deep frying. So number two is the ability to capture fat in your air fryer. So pretty much every air fryer basket is gonna have some type of tray in the bottom. Oh, that's pretty dirty, that needs to clean. And the reason for this is so your food will cook evenly. You can get some airflow under there. But we can actually use this bottom function to our advantage to collect fat coming off the meat that you're gonna cook in your air fryer. And I always think it's funny that there is this huge appliance in the 90s called the George Foreman Grill. Hi, I'm George Foreman and this is my lean, mean, fat reducing grilling machine. Its main purpose, or at least the marketing of it, was to remove fat from your food. So if you're cooking a steak, there's gonna be a lot of fat coming off of that, but don't throw that away. That is a ton of flavor and also a perfectly good cooking medium to use in your other dishes. So what I've been doing recently is when I break down an entire chicken, which I tend to do a lot for meal prep, I've got all of the actual pieces that I'm gonna use for the week, and then I have all of the extra bones and the skin and the fat trimmings. So what I'll do is I'll take all of those extra pieces and rather than roast these off in the oven to build that flavor, I'll just pile it all into the air fryer and it can actually be a little overcrowded. It's still gonna roast up just fine. So these are all the pieces that I am saving, the breast, thighs, two drumsticks, everything else. All the skin, wings, the carcass, thigh bones. We're getting air fried. 370. We'll check it at 15 minutes, but it's probably gonna take about double that. All right, 15 minutes. See, we're getting roasty, but we are, oh. Like I said, probably gonna need another, well, let's say 12 to get it to extra roasty flavor time. All right, ready for this magic? 
That's what I call instant roasty flavor. Look at this chicken skin. I'll be eating you shortly, my friend. So now that those bones are perfectly roasted, they're ready for some stock. So I'll pile those into my pressure cooker. You can just use a regular pot cover them with water and just either pressure cook or slow cook this overnight, depending on how much time you have. And you've got this beautiful golden chicken stock, which is basically just like an all purpose flavor blaster for so many dishes that I've shown you many times in the past. And then on the bottom of that basket, we've got a little surprise. Oh, hoo -hoo. What do we have here? I mean, that looks like just perfectly good schmaltz or chicken fat. Pour right out. And this right here is liquid gold, of course. I'll use this up pretty quickly over the next few days. Number three is energy savings. And I'll tell you right now, I do not have any official data to back this up, but when you just look at the law of physics, I mean, your oven is pretty damn big compared to, this is like a medium size air fryer. You could probably fit at least two of them in there. And with this smaller one, at least three of them in there. How often are you actually using up all the space in your oven? Almost never other than like holidays or when you're cooking for a bunch of people making a turkey or a big roast. That is a very rare occasion. And what I've realized over time, the space of an air fryer, even for a family of four, is generally enough space to cook a meal in or at least one aspect of your meal. So for instance, my my six month old daughter is just starting to eat and she loves chicken drumsticks. And that's not something that we're eating as a family. So in that case, I just need to cook one drumstick, which is such a waste to use your oven. But if you throw it into an air fryer, that's a much more efficient use of energy. Or like I've shown you in the past, at the beginning of the week, I'll prep a bunch of breaded chicken tenders. And rather than cooking them all at the same time, maybe I just want like three of them fresh for a salad or a stir fry. So being able to cook a few things at a time is one going to be much quicker in an air fryer and also a much better use of energy. And speaking of speed, number four is speed of cooking. Like I just mentioned, I have two young kids. My life has only gotten busier over time. So with two more mouths to feed, I've had to figure out how to produce food quicker. And the number one tool that has helped me do that in the kitchen believe it or not, is the air fryer. This thing is gonna cook your food so much quicker than your oven, and I will show you an example of that right now. So let's do a little speed example. The oven versus the air fryer, and the control will be some roasted cauliflower. So let's start with the oven. We're gonna start the clock, and the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to 425, which is a pretty solid roasting temperature. I'll chop up my cauliflower, coat them in oil, a little bit of salt, and then add them to the tray. Now that just took a few minutes, and I'm still Still, of course, waiting for my oven to preheat because preheating ovens up to roasting temperature is gonna take some time. Now we're finally ready to go, so I'll throw those in the oven for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna shake them about halfway through. Oh, oops. It took 44 minutes to get to this point right here. We've got some decent roastiness there. Now let's run a little test with the air fryer. It's really not necessary to preheat your air fryer for roasting vegetables, but you wanna speed things up, go for it. So I'll chop them up, coat them in oil, season them, get them right in that basket, and I'll set my air fryer for 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. All right, we are at just about 20 minutes, so less than half the time. Now, not perfectly even, but for a home cook, that's gonna get the job done. So just keep in mind one thing, this is an electric convection oven, and I find that they're definitely not as strong as gas ovens. So if you have a gas oven, it will take off a little bit of time. But when it comes to speed specifically for a normal amount of food, an air fryer is winning that race every single time. So number five is something that recently just became crystal clear to me, which is the advancement in technology of air fryers over the last few years. Years. When I put out my first air fryer video, that was around three years ago, these things were just starting to get popular. And I can tell you over the last few years, they have only advanced in technology. Specifically, Kosori, which is my favorite brand. These things have gotten more quiet. They cook at higher temperatures than they ever have. And they just look better. They've upped the designs. So naturally, I'm just gonna be using them a lot more, which has happened. And since there's been such positive feedback to the new launch of the shop at Pro 
Cooks.com, especially with our air fryer collection, we've decided to give away 10 Kosori air fryers. So if you're interested in potentially upgrading your air fryer game, check out the link below in the description where you can fill out the information in the form and you'll see instructions to browse our offering of Kosori at the shop and tell us which specific Kosori air fryer model that you would want in your kitchen. And what we're gonna do is randomly pick 10 winners and I'm gonna announce them on my Instagram at Life by Mike G in just about two weeks. So if you sign up, stay tuned for that. Number six is the air fryer's ability to reheat food. Honestly, worth investing in one of them just for this point right here. Because who is preheating their ovens to reheat food? It's so rare. And then your only other option is toaster oven or your microwave. Good for bread slices, really good for reheating things, but bad for texture other than just softness. What about those foods that were originally cooked in the oven that you still want crispy? That's where your air fryer comes into play. So for instance, I've got some pizza right here that I made last night. Now I can throw it in the microwave and it would be fine. But if I throw it in the air fryer, crank it up, cook it for like five minutes, now our pizza has officially been revived back to life. Oh yeah, nice and crispy again. Crust. You ain't getting that in a microwave, my friends. Too hot. And another incredible leftover in the air fryer, maybe the best, are French fries. Since they generally have a lot of residual oil, throw them in there, crank up the heat, and you will have perfectly crispy, reheated French fries. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, perfect. You certainly are not heating up a vat of oil, and it's not worth it to heat up your whole oven for just a little batch of French fries. Mm. Mm. Honestly, if you like French fries and you eat them a lot at home, an air fryer is worth the investment just to reheat fries. I will stand by that statement. All right, here we go, leftovers. Check this out. What is this? What is this? We've got enchiladas. I pulled these out of the freezer like two nights ago. I don't know when they're from. A little spinach in there, veggie enchiladas, some black beans, salsa, some cheese. Let's hit the original intention of these things. Where you get a little bit of texture, get that incredible crispy cheese, and you bake them off. And let's do 395 minutes and see what we get. All right, enchilada reveal. Oh, yep. Damn, that's look good. Hit it with a little salsa. Wow, it's been so long since I've had these that I don't even remember what they taste like. We're judging reheating capabilities. Mm. Wow, those are good. Now I remember. Mm. So we're perfectly warm through, but the key is you still get those crispy edges on the tortillas and on that cheesy crust. Damn, that's good. All right, now, although this looks like just a plastic box, there's a lot of power in this machine and it needs to be handled with respect and care. But number seven is something that I've personally found, this is my personal experience, that air fryers are just a little safer to use than ovens because the whole time I'm using it, I'm basically just in contact with this plastic handle right here. So there's no need to reach in the oven and avoid super hot oven racks. It's all just this plastic handle. And a great feature of this specific air fryer, I can remove the basket, unlatch the safety right there, and pop the basket. Boom. Release. Again, just holding this handle. Now I can conveniently dump my food onto a plate or into a bowl. It's just super easy to handle, and I can imagine a pretty good way to get your kids involved in some cooking without introducing them to a bigger oven. Now the eighth reason I'm choosing air fryers over ovens is quick temp changing. And if you've seen any of my air fryer videos in the past, you know I'm just constantly shifting temperatures. And one reason for that is because it happens quickly, whereas an oven is like a big old cruise ship. When you change temperatures, it takes time to steer that ship in a new direction. Whereas this is like a speedboat, just quick adjustments in the moment. And I like that because cooking is not a perfect recipe or a perfect science. You need to be making micro adjustments in the moment. And air fryers make that super simple. So if I'm cooking something up and I feel like it needs a little more heat, it's as easy as just a few quick touches of a button. And of course, the same thing if I need to lower the temperature. So for any beginner cooks out there that feel a little bit intimidated by cooking, air fryers seem to lower the threshold of perfection, which is why I think a lot of chefs kind of look down on these things. Home cooking does not need to be perfect. It's about putting food on the table that tastes good. And you can certainly do that in these machines. Now, one thing people can point 
Now, one thing I see people complain about a lot that I actually disagree with is the cleanup of air fryers. I find that it's easier than cleaning up an oven tray that's going in the oven. It's generally just washing off the actual tray. Done. And then a quick rinse for the basket. That took two seconds. You dry it off, or you could just put it in the air fryer and start it, and it will dry it off itself. And one thing that's great is the basket is multi-purpose. So instead of dirtying up a bowl to say, coat your veggies in oil, you could do it right in your basket, which you see me do a lot. I'm just like spraying things down with oil right in the air fryer, saving me more cleanup. So my personal opinion, I think air fryers are super easy to clean up. And finally, the 10th reason I have been choosing my air fryer over my oven. We're gonna go outside to do this one. I'm losing my mind. I need to get outside and let nature heal me. Number 10, air fryers are just fun. Basically, they've turned cooking into like a video game. They're easy, they're quick. They're all the things that I've mentioned today. And I can't tell you how many people still comment in on these air fryer videos. Oh, it's just a mini convection oven. Yes, exactly. It's just a mini convection oven. And as a home cook, that's what you need. Just like you've got a mini little microwave there to heat up your food, we don't need these big ovens. Once you understand that concept, everything changes. So much of my cooking at home just requires a little convection oven. So whoever created the first air fryer, Fred Bender Weed. Thank you. You were a godsend. It's completely changed my cooking. And that's why I continue to put out these air fryer videos. I'm just spreading the gospel. It has been a life changer for me in the kitchen. And I know it will be for you, especially as a home cook. And remember, if you want to enter in to win one of those 10 free Kosori air fryers, click the link below. And actually I'll leave you with one more thing. A little teaser, which I really never do for upcoming videos. This garden bed right here is a thing of beauty. Look at these bok choice of all varieties. Purple, green, big, small, everything. It's beautiful. So there will be an epic harvest and I'll be turning these into something incredible. Stay tuned.